Thank you, Jerry, for that kind introduction and for all the hard work you do here at the Miller Center, not just with our Milstein Symposium, but with all your programs and initiatives. You're a good friend, and I am pleased to be working with you on this project. I want to also recognize and thank Governor Barber and Governor Bai for their leadership and hard work as co-chairs of this, our first commission. As tireless public servants and brilliant thinkers, they bring a breadth of experience and depth of knowledge that we'd be hard pressed to duplicate. We created the Milstein Symposium, Ideas for a New American Century, to develop nonpartisan, actionable ideas that will help reinvigorate the American dream for a new generation of Americans. We can thereby preserve and strengthen the America we love for the future. For me, this is personal. As you can see behind me, a copy of a painting by Gustav Kaibat, the Impressionist painter. You see three men scraping a wood floor, stripped to the waist, and there's a bottle of wine. This is exactly the work that my grandfather, Morris Milstein, did when he came to this country. He came as an immigrant with very little formal education, arrived here penniless just after the turn of the last century and began doing exactly the kind of work you see here. But he did it alone, and since he was not French, there was no wine involved. Through hard work and persistence, he went on to found the Circle Floor Company, which served as a platform for our real estate businesses and many other companies. I'm here today representing my family's third generation as beneficiaries of the American dream. My father and grandfather worked hard, very hard, and with some good luck, they made things happen and took advantage of opportunities when they presented themselves. They knew they were responsible for their own successes and failures, but they also knew deep down that America offered an environment in which the American dream was possible. This was the place where people were largely judged on the merits of their work, guided by America's founding principles. Simply put, if you worked hard every day and developed yourself, you had a good chance of providing a better life for yourself and your family. I believe this is a unique and critical aspect of the American experience and one that needs to be revitalized for the 21st century. For most of the 20th century, the American dream was typified by the notion that each succeeding generation would have the opportunity to do better than the last, to be better educated, to achieve more economic stability and security, and with a chance for even greater success. Many jobs included health benefits and pension plans, creating adequate health and retirement security when combined with Social Security and Medicare. Home ownership played a central role in ensuring upward mobility. But lately, there is a well-founded concern that the American dream is fading, that quality jobs providing opportunity for advancement are vanishing, that our training and educational system is not as effective or as competitive as we need it to be, and is too often bloated with costs and misaligned with the needs of the global economy and the workplace of the 21st century. And that our now crumbling infrastructure, which previously had set the table for the prosperity of the 20th century, just can't support the kind of economic growth that will keep the United States an engine of opportunity. These are daunting challenges to be sure, but I believe America's best days lie ahead if we join together around the right ideas that can reinvigorate the American dream for this new century. It is the power of ideas that brought us to the Miller Center to create the Milstein Symposium, not with the goal of producing white papers or endless lists of recommendations that can be read once and then filed away, but rather in a thoughtful, nonpartisan way to provide a roadmap of practical ideas to properly address many of the issues outlined above. That is what we are here to achieve, and I'm grateful to Governors Bai and Barber for the intensity with which they have immersed themselves in the work of this first commission. We begin, as you know, with the manufacturing sector and the growth of small and mid-sized enterprises, critical ingredients of the American dream. There was a sense not too long ago that many manufacturing jobs in the United States were gone forever, and with them the economic stability and prosperity that could ensure upward mobility and a thriving middle class. As we'll learn today, that is not necessarily the case. 
If we as a nation have the strength and fortitude to make the right decisions now to ensure that the American dream lives on for the generations to come. I welcome you all to the program this morning and look forward to the work of this and future commissions in the months and years ahead. Thank you.